Good morning. My name is Martin Estrada. I'm the United States Attorney based in Los Angeles. We're here today with our law enforcement partners to announce federal criminal charges related to the death of the actor, Matthew Perry. Following Mr. Perry's death in October of last year, law enforcement, my office, and our partners represented on this stage began an in-depth, wide-ranging investigation. That investigation has revealed a broad, underground criminal network responsible for distributing large quantities of ketamine to Mr. Perry and others. This network included a live-in assistant, various go-betweens, two medical doctors, and a major source of drug supply known as, quote, the ketamine queen. We charge five defendants in this matter. These defendants took advantage of Mr. Perry's addiction issues to enrich themselves. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They knew what they were doing was risking great danger to Mr. Perry, but they did it anyways. In the end, these defendants were more interested in profiting off Mr. Perry than caring for his well-being. I'm going to talk about the indictment, the allegations, and the charges in more detail. On October 28, 2023, Mr. Perry was found deceased in his home. An autopsy was conducted following his death. That autopsy showed that he had died due to the acute effects of ketamine. Ketamine is a controlled substance. It has some legitimate uses, but it is also used illegally. It is used by people seeking to disassociate from reality. It can cause serious health effects, serious health problems, including loss of consciousness, including spikes in blood pressure, and including respiratory issues that can deprive the brain of oxygen. For that reason, it is, it is a drug that must be administered by medical professionals, and the patient must be monitored closely. That did not occur here. This investigation focused on who supplied the ketamine to Mr. Perry. As many of you know, Mr. Perry struggled with addiction in the past. And on many occasions, he sought help for his addiction issues. The investigation revealed that in the fall of 2023, Mr. Perry fell back into addiction, and these defendants took advantage to profit for themselves. The two lead defendants in this case are defendants Salvador Placencia and defendant Jasveen Sanya. First, I'll talk about defendant Placencia. Defendant Placencia was a medical doctor. He worked with another medical doctor, defendant Mark Chavez, to obtain ketamine. He then worked with Mr. Perry's live-in assistant, defendant Kenneth Iwamasa to distribute that ketamine to Mr. Perry. Over two months, from September to October 2023, they distributed approximately 20 vials of ketamine to Mr. Perry in exchange for $55,000 in cash. Defendant Placentia saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. He wrote in a text message in September 2023, quote, I wonder how much this moron will pay. He also stated in text messages that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's sole source of supply. He wrote in a text message that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's, quote, go-to for drugs. As a doctor, defendant Placentia knew full well the danger of what he was doing. In fact, on one occasion, he injected Mr. Perry with ketamine and he saw Mr. Perry freeze up and his blood pressure spike. Despite that, he left additional vials of ketamine for defendant Iwamasa to administer to Mr. Perry. Of course, defendant Iwamasa had no medical training to speak of. Defendant Placentia knew what he was doing was harming Mr. Perry. He had spoken to another patient in mid-October 2023, and he told that patient that Mr. Perry was spiraling out of control with his addiction. Nonetheless, defendant Placentia continued to offer ketamine to Mr. Perry. 
Likewise, Defendant Sonia knew what she was doing was harming defendant, uh, defendants and also Mr. Perry. She took advantage of Mr. Perry by selling large amounts of ketamine to Mr. Perry over a two-week period in October of 2023. She sold approximately 50 vials of ketamine for approximately $11,000 in cash. She worked with a broker, defendant Eric Fleming, and also the live-in assistant, defendant Iwamasa, to distribute this ketamine. Sonia and the broker, defendant Fleming, saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. In a text message, the broker wrote, quote, I wouldn't do it if there wasn't a chance of me making some money for doing this. Defendant Sonia sold the batch of ketamine that resulted in Mr. Perry's death on October 28th. Officers later searched Defendant Sonia's home. During that search, they found what amounted to a drug selling emporium. They found 80 vials of ketamine, thousands of pills containing methamphetamine, cocaine, bottles of Xanax and other illegally obtained prescription drugs, and drug selling paraphernalia including scales and ledgers. As I mentioned, the defendants in this case knew what they were doing was wrong. When they'd refer to the ketamine, they used coded language. They'd refer to it using terms such as, quote, Dr. Pepper, or quote, bots, or quote, cans. Also, defendants Placentia and Chavez, as medical doctors, knew full well this was not the proper way to administer ketamine, and they even talked about that in their exchanges. And defendant Sonia also knew that she was doing something that caused great risk to Mr. Perry. In fact, during this investigation, we learned that several years before, in 2019, defendant Sonia had sold ketamine to another customer. That person died the same day. And a family member of that person sent a message to defendant Sonia telling her the cause of death was ketamine. Nonetheless, defendant Sonia continued selling drugs, including ketamine, including the ketamine that ultimately killed Mr. Perry. That other victim was a person named Cody McGlory. He died in 2019. As a result of this investigation, we have filed a drug distribution charge related to the death of Mr. McLaurin. After Mr. Perry died, these defendants tried to cover up what they had done. On October 28th, after reading news reports of Mr. Perry's death, defendant Sonia wrote a text message to defendant Fleming saying, quote, delete all our messages. Likewise, after Mr. Perry's death, defendant Placentia falsified medical records and notes to try to make it look like what he was doing was legitimate. It was not. We have filed numerous federal charges against the five defendants. These charges include conspiracy to distribute ketamine, distribution of ketamine resulting in death, maintaining drug-involved premises, for that drug selling emporium the defendant Sonia had, altering and falsifying records related to a federal investigation for those false medical notes and records that defendant Placentia made, and multiple other drug trafficking counts. Of course, the defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty. The penalties these defendants face are very significant with regard to defendant Placentia the statutory maximum sentence he faces is 120 years in federal prison. Now, with regard to defendant Sonia, the statutory maximum she faces is life imprisonment. By filing these extensive and serious charges, we are sending a clear message. If you are in the business of selling dangerous drugs, we will hold you accountable for the deaths that you cause. This is nothing new for us. Since 2022, my office has filed over 60 cases against drug dealers who've caused the death of another person. These cases are known as death resulting cases. They're labor intensive cases 
and we work with our law enforcement partners, including ones represented here today, to bring those cases. Our office is a national leader in bringing those cases. They're very important because every victim's life counts. If you are in the drug selling business and you're selling dangerous drugs, you are playing roulette with other people's lives, just like the five defendants here did to Mr. Perry. Defendants nowadays are on full notice that the products they sell could result in the death of another person. <coughs> Therefore, if you're in the drug business, and despite these risks, you continue in the drug business, you are pushed by greed to gamble with other people's lives, be advised, we will hold you accountable. I want to thank our partners in this case, the Los Angeles Police Department, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. These investigators did a phenomenal job digging into the case, looking at every angle to develop a case, a strong case, against not only those who killed Mr. Perry, but also Mr. McClory. I want to note that these cases are important and we'll continue to collaborate with our law enforcement partners to bring them, to ensure that justice is brought to every victim. And finally, let me thank the prosecutors responsible for the investigation and the prosecution of this case. Those are Assistant United States Attorneys Ian Yanello and Xiaohan Tsai. And now I'd like to introduce Chief of Los Angeles Police Department, Dominic Choi. All right, good morning and thank you, Martine. You know, while it's, it's tragedy that brings us all here together, uh, I'm happy to stand here knowing that these dangerous individuals are no longer on the streets and they won't be able to harm anyone else. Uh, the Los Angeles Police Department and our partners here today, uh, we're committed to investigating all cases like this, uh, and it's regardless of someone's background or socioeconomic status. Um, and just with all of our cases, uh, this investigation was done impartially. We let the facts drive this investigation, and those facts led us to a group of individuals who were responsible for supplying and distributing to Mr. Perry narcotics that led to his unfortunate and untimely death. The group standing here today, <clears throat> it's a prime example how our partnerships and our collaboration can yield meaningful results. I want to thank LAPD, our Robbery Homicide Division, who is standing in the back there, uh, the U.S. Attorney Martina Estrada and his team, uh, the DEA and her team, as well as the U.S. Postal and Special Service and their team for, for their hard work, diligence, and real patience. Now, I know people think this took a long time, but there was a lot of work, a lot of investigative strategies um, that went into this to make sure that there's a, a solid case and that we can pursue this uh, in, in the courts. Our relationship with our federal partners, it helps us ensure that these criminals will have meaningful sentences and be an example for anyone that is willing to risk or jeopardize distributing and supplying unlawful or narcotics to anyone. Um, and I just really want, want people to know that that is the message. You cannot get away with this regardless of your background or socioeconomic status. Um, breaking the law is breaking the law and you are dangerous and you are jeopardizing lives. So thank you all, all of my partners for being involved in this and, and being, bringing us to where we are at today. Um, and at this time I'd like to introduce DEA Administrator Ann Milgram. Good morning. Today we announced charges brought against five individuals who together are responsible for the death of Matthew Perry. Each of the defendants played a key role in his death. They falsely prescribed, sold, or injected the ketamine that caused Matthew Perry's tragic death. In the United States, most forms of ketamine are only approved by the Food and Drug Administration for anesthesia. A nasal spray version is approved for treatment of depression, but only in a certified medical setting. Here, Matthew Perry sought treatment for depression and anxiety and went to a local clinic where he became addicted to intravenous ketamine. 
When clinic doctors refused to increase his dosage, he turned to unscrupulous doctors who saw Perry as a way to make quick money. Dr. Placencia and Dr. Chavez violated the oath they took to care for their patients. Instead of do no harm, they did harm so that they could make more money. Without performing any medical evaluation or monitoring, they supplied Matthew Perry with large amounts of ketamine in exchange for large sums of money, charging Perry $2,000 for a vial that cost Dr. Chavez approximately $12. As Matthew Perry's ketamine addiction grew, he wanted more, and he wanted it faster and cheaper. That is how he ended up buying from street dealers who sold the ketamine that ultimately led to his death. In doing so, he followed the arc that we have tragically seen with many others whose substance use disorder begins in a doctor's office and ends in the street. Perry turned to a street dealer, Eric Fleming, who sourced his ketamine from a drug trafficker known as the Ketamine Queen, Jasveen Sangha. The ketamine supplied by Sangha would ultimately be the dose that took Matthew Perry's life. Sangha knew that the ketamine she supplied could be deadly, since in 2019 she had sold ketamine to Cody McLaurie, who died at the age of 33. But despite this knowledge, she continued to sell ketamine and methamphetamine throughout Los Angeles. Matthew Perry's journey began with unscrupulous doctors who abused their position of trust because they saw him as a payday. And it ended with street dealers who sold him ketamine in unmarked vials. The desperation that led Perry to these individuals was not met with help, as it should have been from the doctors. But instead, it was met with exploitation. Exploitation by those who should have guided him toward help. This betrayal of trust is at the heart of this tragedy. Since 2023, DEA has investigated nearly 500 drug poisoning and overdose cases just like Matthew Perry's. We run a national initiative known as OD Justice, where we work with our state and local law enforcement partners to conduct investigations after someone has passed away. And it is important to note that the national model we today have in every 50 state across the United States is based on the work that started here in Los Angeles. We began this work with our partners in the Los Angeles Police Department and with other local police departments and sheriff's offices in California in the Los Angeles area and with the U.S. Attorney's Office. And today it stands as our national model for this critical work. Together, as part of OD Justice, we work to bring justice for the lives that have been lost and to stop others from dying. Regardless of the size or scope of a drug distribution network, the DEA will work nonstop to uncover and disrupt this illegal activity, and in this case, the deadly activity. I want to close by noting that Matthew Perry's death is not just a tragic overdose. After his 2020 book openly discussed his struggles with substance use disorder, Matthew Perry told podcast host Tom Power that he would prefer to be remembered for helping people rather than for his work on Friends as Chandler Bing. And so perhaps what has happened and the tragic details that we are discussing today can help others and save lives. I want to thank the Los Angeles Police Department the United States Postal Inspection Service, and the United States Attorney's Office in the Central District of California for their tremendous partnership and their outstanding dedication to this case. I also have the privilege of serving every single day with the men and women of the DEA, and today I want to particularly recognize the outstanding work of our Los Angeles Field Division, as well as our diversion investigators who tirelessly worked on this case to bring justice to the victims and the families. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce Postal Inspector Shields. <clears throat> Good morning, and again, welcome. 
I'd like to thank U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada for his tireless dedication to protecting the residents of the Central District of California and his partnership in the Postal Inspection Service. As the nation's oldest law enforcement agency, the Postal Inspection Service has had a long, proud, and successful history of combating criminals who misuse our nation's postal system and cause harm to our employees and customers. This is our mission. In this case, our agency, in partnership with the Los Angeles Police Department, the Los Angeles Drug Enforcement Administration, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, worked to seize, search, and analyze evidence that has culminated in arrests and a dismantling of the group that is responsible for providing the ketamine and the reported contributed to the death of Matthew Perry. In this case, <coughs> These individuals knowingly and willfully distributed ketamine to Mr. Perry as he struggled to overcome addiction, which ultimately led to Mr. Perry's tragic demise. Unfortunately, every day in this country, families are grieving for their loved ones lost to drug overdoses. We want these families and the American public to know that the Postal Service will not be an unwitting accomplice to anyone using the U.S. mail to distribute illegal drugs or drug paraphernalia. The Inspection Service continues to work tirelessly to rid the mail of illicit drugs, fight drug trafficking and the associated violence, preserve the integrity of the mail, and most importantly, provide a safe environment to postal employees, customers, and the American public. The Postal Inspection Service is turning the tide against drug dealers. Detecting and stopping their shipments is only the beginning. Tracing illegal drugs back to the source and shutting them down is the ultimate mission. Once again, a tremendous thank you to our partners in federal and state and local law enforcement as well as the U.S. Attorney's Office for their continued collaboration and hard work in support of this mission. Thank you.